Welcome in everyone to Vaudeville's Prime Time Tuesday. I am Vaudeville himself, Nick Ambrosic, and we are bringing you a very intense tournament. We almost got every team who signed up to follow through and compete in the tournament tonight, but one of them had to bow out due to some unsuspecting illness, so hopefully they will get better and participate in one in the future. Apart from that, though, 26 teams, $420 on the line tonight. It's going to be great. Double elimination bracket. A few more best of threes than we saw before. I think just one more, actually, for the lower semifinal. I'll have to check the bracket to see exactly how I set that up. But, of course, we have a lot of great teams, a lot of great content, a lot of great casters here, too. So, please be kind to our casters. Some of them casting Omega Strikers for the first time in a while, for the first time at all. So, there'll be some mix-ups. There'll be some hiccups. But it's going to be a great time, nonetheless. Hopefully, you all enjoy the match today. But that's enough for me. I got to get this match started. Lakeland University, UTD Comets. We have our casters here, Zephyr and Zodrilix. It's going to be a great one here as well. So let me send it away to them. Enough of me. You'll see me later on tonight. but see it from the cast of themselves in just a sec. Oh, and right off the bat, obviously, we do see some initial hovers uh, as we're going to be starting to look at the bands. I like the fact that the Rasmus is immediately coming out here, folks. <laughs> yep. For those yep. of you who don't know, uh, on the oh. side of UTD, <laughs> Frightfully Fresh is a die-hard Rasmus goalie, and especially on Imi's map, I mean, you you or you kind of have to ban it alongside the fact that is that oppressive there at the end of the day. Obviously, lots of switch-ups still left available. Frightfully, there is. We do start to see some of these picks. Uh, I am surprised to see the X come out. I still think super duper powerful. Uh, but oh, I'm actually I'm getting a little twisted here. We haven't quite had the patch hit just yet. Not yet. He's, not yet. He's not, he's, he hasn't been shrunken just yet, but that not yet. Be, that'll be happening soon. So X is still X will still give it to you in this tournament here. All right, X gonna give it to you here over on the side of Lakeland on the opposite end. No surprise to see the Asher pulled out that secondary goalie, mm -hmm. of course, frightfully fresh. Blue, of course, heavily now favoring that Juliet, especially after we did see uh, some of the changes, but already right off the bat, that early aggression starting yeah. blue, taking good forward potential. I like that. The aggression here is actually going to be very, very key, um, especially on a map like Amy's app, where you can have a lot of just mm -hmm. forward KO potential. You really got to be careful playing around anywhere and a very quick goal for UTD Comets. Brickbat finding the oh. angle around the entire team. And see, I, I kind of want to point this out right off the, the get-go here. It's it's kind of the difference in how UTD are already displaying themselves. Some of that early pressure. <laughs> oh, my God. Notably, uh, what? Here. Okay, say goodbye to X for now with numbers advantage. Just got to find that core in a dominant place, and that should be a guaranteed barrier. Yes, absolutely. X wow. is already back up, though. No barrier to be seen. Um, and that was a dinged, ooh, that rune banish was disgusting. They're not going to be letting Blue do anything on that Juliet. And it will be looking like the barrier is actually going to be going in favor of Lakeland. And now Blue is in a very scary position as that X could very easily be there to wreak some havoc. Mm. But it does look like they're able to at least relieve the pressure a little bit and hopefully be able to bring it down. Ooh, first core flip coming out. Does it manage to find anything? Oh! It's big damage. Sword's been doing a really good job. We've seen both of those firewall sentries be the main factor on deflecting double yes. goal barriers there. Now, Ethan X Maximus it is a guaranteed knockout there to send Blue away. Now, with this forward pressure, we're going to see return of a turret of their own but that banish as well as that position is just primed and ready for mouse to step in and find the next goal yeah and one of the things that is going to be absolutely huge throughout this entire game is the amount of um ko's that are coming out we're seeing this already i, I was saying it in the draft that this is going to be a very 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 bloody game and we've already seen it happening now. Lots of KOs coming across the board between both teams. And it's how you're going to be able to capitalize on that. Blue going to be looking for opportunities to bully Sorensen in the goal. Not going to be allowing him to do anything. But if there's going to be a goalie that's going to be good at evading getting bullied, it's going to be Amy. And wow, Frightfully Fresh with some incredible defense despite the pressure Ooh. coming from that X. Ooh. Very nice banish, the elusive pulled out there from Brick Bat, but the oversteppage for there will push Blue up, but the response on Ethan is just 
as quickly. A 2v2 situation that Firewall Sentry from Imi almost immediately utilized, albeit maybe not as directly. Oh, like that rune pillar. It's perfect. Preventing that corner. That was gorgeous from Mouse there. Blue gonna be punishing him though, taking them out, knocking them from actually very far away. Like that was crazy. Meanwhile, on the other side, Ethan with that bell ringer does send Brick back, back, but it doesn't change the fact that they are able to find that barrier. Send Ethan off nonetheless in overtime here. The extra core speed definitely becoming prevalent. Blue still step forward, but you can't quite get past the bandage or that sentry there. As a result, Blue fairly Almost low here. there. Tries for the Blue's flurry. Blue's got to be careful. Blue's oh. in a very dangerous position, and Sorensen is going to take advantage of that, knocking Blue out. This is going to give a man advantage over to Lakeland. And a beautiful core flip from Brickbat to hopefully keep some of that pressure relief. Oh! Oh! By Sorensen, and that will be Lakeland University getting, going one point, uh, or not Lakeland, UTD going to be scoring again, putting themselves up in the lead. I can't believe that. Just a slice edge to sneak that one in there over on the side. That's that's just simple mistakes being made, especially after how much time was invested into that round. Now, granted, already right off the bat, blue stepping in there. We're going to see E.T. Han taking quite a bit of damage right off the bat. Response of an own, a firewall sentry forcing out some of that extra energy. To go elusive there. Going to try to hold this one off for now. Pushback. Blue might be on the warpath here to take out that X, because if X goes down, that's going to be a lot of pressure that's going to be relieved for UTD. But it does not look like it's going to be coming through, though. They're just going to let oh, nice. X live. Actually, X taking advantage of Frightly Fresh there, complete on their lonesome. Try and see if they can stagger out those cooldowns. That'll and does... be it. Wow. In the face of the elusive, just walks that one in for free there from that kind of distance. We tie this one up in our first set between these two rosters. And this is what you want to see, those tie games coming out, the crazy intense <coughs> high stakes action right away in round one. Oh man, this is exactly what I love to see. Blue getting it mouse Ooh. to be very low there. That Asher alt was looking a little scary, but he does manage to keep it out. And that's a lot of stagger invested to try to put some forward pressure down. And as a result, it is going to be that guaranteed center KO to find this in response. Now with numbers advantage, Sentry will push this one back. That conveyor belt and the pillar keeping it in Lakeland's control, albeit without X. Can't really capitalize. Oh! No! Chance to play. Come on, let the man play the game. Let them play the game. I mean, uh, I mean, you 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 have to respect that there. And now, obviously, no goalie left alive. Blue with forward potential. They're just gonna send so that much play pressure. In. Oh man, just not even giving him a chance. UTD putting out so much pain in there. Gotta say, good, good cyber swipe finishes that one off, leaps forward, but I feel like it was almost inevitable in the end there for UTD. And I mean, you gotta highlight some of those heavy mistakes here from Ethan on that back end. Kind of the double KO, unnecessary, especially on a bar of full stagger here. Mm hmm. Absolutely. You gotta be, a, a, this is one of those maps where you can die from anywhere, but especially when you're somebody as big as X, it is, you, you have the stagger, like you have the stagger to be able to keep yourself alive. So to be knocked out with that much stagger left is just Woo! rough. Oh my gosh, those sentries. <laughs> I can tell you right off the bat there, Heavy Impact already playing in with major favor, allowing a good center oh control my. here. First KO found, maybe a bull rush forward, but it misses on Frightfully Fresh. I love the fact that we still see that cyber pop from the other side, and it's almost guaranteed that Lakeland find that one in. Yes, absolutely. And just throughout though all of it, even with that, that defense or that offense, just being an assault that you're not going to be able to... Uh, Hold the line that well. Frightfully Fresh did a, a tremendous job at Ooh. holding the line for just long enough. But unfortunately, even that, even an onslaught like that one, there's not really too much you can do. Wow, Brickbat there with the almost immaculate timing. 
on that strike. Finds the core back out. Doesn't allow for the drop of the barrier. And instead, we'll see Ethan goodbye. A pop on the side. And Bat with a quick return here. And that coordination, the synchronization between Juliet and Amy in that was absolutely impeccable to be able to allow UTD to score that one back and, re and respond. Now, right off, immediately ET far into the back line here. That sentry not really primed and ready. Sadly, the core doesn't quite hit. Frightly Fresh keeping that one back out. The conveyor continuing to push this one forward. It does take the full flurry there from Blue to finally get this one off to the other side. Quick vanish off with the pillar to pump that one into the bell ringer. It's a numbers advantage. A core flip utilized from Frightfully Fresh here. Can't believe they're keeping this one in it. Step by step, pillar by pillar, back into it. And finally, ET to punch that one in. The amount of just absolute defense that was coming out from Frightfully was incredible. But unfortunately, the onslaught was just too much. That power of that X coming out, not only is X such a KO threat, but the ability to just literally punch the core back into your face all the time just makes him so obnoxious to deal with. Well, this time around, though, I like the fact that UTD already on the better foot forward and oh, oh dodging oh out on the flurry. Goes elusive, gives that one away for free to blue. As Blue just says, all right, this one's going in. Just all right. Just it right in there. And, but at that point, though, if you're the Amy, are you, you're either going to be taking the, you're either going to take that kick Ooh. and possibly be shoved straight into the back of your goal, or you'll just let the core go in. Either way, on the trade-off from both teams. Wow. Very back and forth there. Pillar on the back end. It's a 2v2 situation. Gonna let that one ride out in the face of the sentry. Almost looked a little bit dicey with Mouse riding up there, but they do come for the back. Control, a cyber swipe forward into the Baron. It's back to back, a pass to Blue, and oh, a quick jump from Imi keeps this one in play here for Lakeland. That was a gorgeous teleport from Sorensen to keep that one alive. I thought that one was gonna be in because the synchronization there was looking so good, but E.T. Han able to bait out the core flip and push it right past tying up the sets, giving Lakeland <laughs> a way, a chance to strike back in this game. Ooh. Already right off the bat here, though. Now we get into a situation where this X is going to stack that built different, more than primed and ready here. We talk a lot about that kind of backline pressure that we saw early on that gave Lakeland their prowess into at least that last round. The continuation, a little bit of some struggles there regarding what that pickup may be on the discussion for UTD. Obviously, they inevitably settle on getting that bulk up over on the side of Juliet. They want Blue mm -hmm. to be a bit more of a power forward carry here, but the rest, maybe not too strong. Yeah. One thing that is going to make the Rune a lot more obnoxious is that prime time pick. Rune being one of, actually, one of the strikers that I've put a decent amount of time into Having prime time on him just makes the ability for pillars to just go constantly. And it is just one of the most obnoxious yeah. things to have to deal with when you're playing against a rune. And, you know, as a rune player, I appreciate it when I'm able to get prime time because then I'm the annoying one. But when I'm <laughs> playing against a rune, it's not the most fun thing in the world. Tell you what, who's just as annoying here. It's E.T. Han once again stepping forward. This time fairly low on the stagger, but did punish out Blue for a while. It was almost the setup back into that sentry line to find the barrier. I love the glitch pop on the other end to prevent the barrier from going down. Sentry not in a line of action, and the bull rush in isn't able to find it in the oh, face of a lucid. Oh, Instead, no. E.T. Han punished. Now potentially looking for more. Now we'll see how the teams are going to play on this power play. We're seeing now with the man advantage, Frightfully Fresh moving up to hopefully pay off a little bit more aggression and, and continue to keep the pressure. But now that E.T. Han is back, Ooh. it's going to be very scary moment for him. The core barely not going in and Lakeland now taking this opportunity to trade it in. But nice. with a beautiful nice. angle, bouncing it off the top of the goal and putting it in for UTD. UTD are going to be the first ones on the board here in this third set. Say what you will about the presence in this backline and how hard it has been for ET Han and Mouse putting pressure where it counts. You get the rock to blue. He makes it count. 
ET though, once again, stepping up, playing this one forward, keeps that control. Sentry to cut off Mouse for now in the face of that pillar, but it doesn't find responses yet. Yes, the two teams doing... There we go. Oh, there we go. The first barrier is going to be going down. The bull rush is going to go a little bit Next past the core. And it's going to be a dangerous situation here for the Asher to defend. But it does look like it's going to be helping an incredible defense against that core flip. But unfortunately, E.T. Han and Mouse comboing the rune and the X way too well is going to be allowing Lakeland to score. That was i thought maybe they were going to relieve that but unfortunately they frightfully fresh was unable to hold the line enough but huh. some incredible core flip defense there from him a little bit of a mistake there on the back end of that barrier going into this round is going to be something that might punish lakeland and oh I think, I think the pop might have pushed that one back into the goal. Just came out just a hair's breath a little too late there. That's going to put UTD one up. That is absolutely, that was such a fast response. Blue immediately back on the warpath. Not going to be allowing Mouse to have any influence on this rune. And that is going to be actually a very powerful kill to have there. A beautiful elusive there from Sorensen to keep them alive. Nice sentry. Nice sentry. Nice. That sentry is disgustingly big. Uh, we talked about it earlier on. I know if you see it, I don't know if it was Monumentalist or potentially uh, something else there that was picked up in that first <laughs> round. It's set up Brick to have that ability uh, now that we see it. UTD now only one set away here now. I'm going to be honest. I, I mean, I've casted a little bit of the Omega Strikers. Haven't had much of a guise regarding the Orb Ponder or Orb Replicator. I don't think they have really proven themselves as of yet. But overall, looking at just about all this, not exactly the best pickings here. It is going to be, we'll say frightfully fresh, at least with that big fish that walks away. Good, nice class can though in response. I've seen a lot, I've seen some Orb Replicator being a high priority. Um, it all kind of depends on the situation that you're in. I've seen Orb Replicator being a priority for goalies specifically, just right. because they can combo, because the they most. just run back and grab orbs all the time. I don't see it being much of a prowess on any forward to get the Orb Replicator, um, or just any of the Orb ones in general, just because your Orb play as a forward just isn't really Ooh. there. And that big fish is going to be significantly higher of a priority yeah, for... Of course the asher than any of the orb abilities are going to be so well either way in the midst of our discussion here we've got double ko's found in full mouse though still with presence in the face of two is able to elicit that barrier once again another double banish in the pillar to set up that extra damage onto blue once again a long shot on the sentry firewall here but it, oh i can't believe Whoa. the core doesn't find its way forward an excellent oh defense from gosh. lakeland on all sides there between the pillar and I mean. Some incredible defense now coming out from Frightfully Fresh. Their UTD is Good barely able to relieve the pressure with that amazing core flip. Let's see if they're going to be able to hopefully turn this one and get a barrier. They definitely need an incredible pillar there to show up from Mouse. Oh man, this is going so Ooh. back and forth. That one got so close. I was, oh my gosh, I didn't know what the Asher was thinking there, but Asher got it through. E.T. Han now is going to be going down. It's a solid defense. Lots on the action there. But, oh, the pop from the other angle is what finally seals the deal in the end. Not even from anywhere close to the core. From the opposite side of the goal. Lakeland takes this one away. And hopefully it's something that doesn't take the wind out of UTD's sails. For a goal like that, as much as it feels bad, they still have the momentum of the fact that they are up a set. And, oh, that was a beautiful core flip from Mouse. That one is going to be looking very scary there. But they do manage to keep it up frightfully fresh with some insane saves. A banish that's looking oh. very dangerous, and that will be what puts it in for Lakeland. It's a perfect banish. Mouse there sets that one up. And just as Frightly Fresh comes back in, it's far too late. And this is what we talk about in terms of the oppressive nature of this specific combo forwards. Every time UTD allows Lakeland to get that forward pressure, that's when we start seeing some issues. I like the weight on the mm -hmm. core flip there. 
to dissuade, but the pillar on the opposite end from Mouse really prevents this one from finally hammering it home. It is the return that inevitably gets it. A core flip from Frightfully Fresh, and it's back into the hands of UTD. Along the that was a really nice pass over to Brick, waiting and to be in the right position for their team to hand it off. Now we're going to see... Ooh, that glitch pop was going to be a little bit dangerous there. A lot of combat happening up in the top, but it will look like ET Han is going to be looking for a possible pass over to Mouse. There but it go. will be cleared out over into the center. The pressure is now on Lakeland. Nice. And this is an incredible follow-up, not only to put the core in the goal, but to also say good night to Sorensen and send them off the edge. And that's that's the danger of that Juliet. Even if you see something like that flame flurry come out, you've still got the fiery kicks to send themselves into the goal at any given point that you just simply can't win any strike battle up against here. No. Something that's given UTD their presence, but they still have to defend only one goal away here. A big banish straight into Pillar is oh. going to send potentially Blue home, and oh, the and berries flurry. just couldn't quite open quick enough. But Blue is going to pay for that with their life now let's see lakeland getting a lot of pressure here without the juliet to be able to fight off anybody this is going to be looking really really Back. rough for utd they're going to be able to hold it maybe for just a little bit longer the sentry's winning out because of the time perfect of the time is creator buff et han is going to be going down a lot of pressure now for lakeland a beautiful pillar from mouse inside the goal breaks but back up going to be an incredible passing play back and forth. No matter how good of a goalie you are, a 2v1 is a very scary scenario. UTD now only one point away from securing their round one victory. Need to clean this one up, send themselves forward here to seal the deal. Start out a bit rough, but I like the fact that they aren't letting Lakeland get to play with their fluid. Sentry does push back, but it doesn't really find any of the stagger. As a result, ET looking low, a conveyor in play, and it pushes X almost out of here. Blue steps up, but doesn't quite find the KO in full. Blue trying to get ET out of there. A beautiful paint with nice, nice patience there on that core flip to be able to put down the barrier. Blue is in a very dangerous position. If you were Lakeland, a big beautiful banish, big banish from Mouse. Rick is going to be showing back up in here. A beautiful clear up. The sentry going to be coming out now. This is now looking very dangerous for UTD. Brick just says, give me that sentry. I will tank all of it. And puts themselves in a very low scenario. Oh, and a beautiful core flip from Han there. This is going to be looking like that will be Lakeland putting us into a set five with a gorgeous team coordination and so many abilities coming out and that will be us going into a set five i believe we're on the verge of a 25 point game i might have missed on what that set three looked like but this has been a very very close game just about everything all set up and ready to go here we got the prime picks right off the bat for lakeland here a bit of the extra sentry on the opposite end as well as that major debuffs that will come to full fruition from this rune. Slim pickings for the rest. We got some sparks across the board here. Not much to really write home about. No. Honestly, the Awakenings have been kind of lackluster in this game. But the one thing that is going to be dangerous now is Mouse with that cast to last. Their banishes have been absolutely disgusting. And as you can see right now, Blue gets banished. And that lasted forever. Blue had more than enough time to do their taxes while sitting there <laughs> under the pain of that rune banish. Stepping forward here, will try to find a nice response. Sorensen is so quick to pull this one out, and it is going to require the sentry. I don't know if that cooldown was ultimately necessary, but it doesn't matter when you're pushing this core in the hands of Mouse. Oh my gosh, Mouse with an incredible solo play with Rune, just putting so many pillars out where they last so long. That was absolutely oh! disgusting, and Blue will say, not going to happen again. You're, you need to take 12 seconds and think about how you have hurt us. X Maximus is going to be pulled out here, but at the end of the day, the bounce still finds its way forward. Mouse back into it. And for UTD, it's a backward bounce oh. off of the pillar straight into the hands of Blue 4. The banish was ever, ever so slightly late.
And just the beautiful corner sneaking it right past the pillar, right in between everything. The needle was threaded so beautifully by Blue. There was very little oh, you could no. do there if you were Lakeland. And this is a very dangerous situation now for UTD. The pressure is trading back and forth the entire time. Blue with an incredible flurry to prevent Sorensen from being able to defend their own barrier on this one. Double pillar down. That's going to be a major cooldown. Not available, but it doesn't matter. A bounce off the back wall sends E.T. Han into his next goal to right home. And this is now where it comes down to the absolute wire. Lakeland University only needing one more goal. Oh. But a trade. <laughs> the two killers on both teams are going to be traded almost instantaneously. As now we find ourselves in a 2v2 scenario. The Amy versus the Rune. The Asher versus the Amy. But now they're back up. The Sentry is going to be going out for UTD. No Mouse barrier is going to be found. Out. Mouse getting killed. And that will be the barrier for UTD. The goalie is going down. This is going to be a huge opportunity. It's going to come down to the solo defense here from E.T. Han. He's able to hold it for just a little bit longer. Mouse is back up. But it does not matter. And we have gone the entire distance in our first match today, all the way through in a final point to collect all of our marbles here. Brick right off the bat, a quick pop forward, a break on the bear, and it's just a little bit slow. Presence with the ultimate, a century forward, a full knockout, blue stepping up with the flurry. It's a core that pops back, but a fist forward looking for the goal. Pass is coming out. Blue is going to be hanging out near that goal, looking for the opportunity. Mouse is going to be back up. The Mouse sentry in. is going to be popped by Sorensen. Let's see if... And the barrier oh. will go down. This is going to come down to it. Mouse oh. is able to stick it through. Rightfully fresh, unable to hold on. Had, his, had the core flip, but couldn't pop it off. The core sneaks right past him, and Lakeland University will be winning this one in week one of the closest games I've ever watched of Omega Strikers. 25 minutes of absolute insanity from the two teams. Right. And these are the 16 <laughs> and 17 seeded teams. I, I We walked into the day and Vaughn's sitting there behind the scenes saying, this is, this is going to be the match. This is going to be the most interesting matchup. This is two teams that are so close in terms of their skill set. I have to say, uh, props where it's due there, frightfully fresh, as tough as it gets, you're picked, you lose out on the Rasmus, you're on your secondary, 116 saves against it the is. world there, so close to pulling oh this one God. off in the end, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter, it's Lakeland who moves forward.